we're on next episode of Did You Know with Dr. Raymond Lombard. We are back in the studio today and um, he's back from his travels. Um, I hope it's been amazing. Uh, surely. You've uh, been to Thailand, the yeah, Philippines, I'm the Thai outreaches. Training about 250 men and women of God. Which is amazing. Yes, yeah, some people well came done. to know the Lord. Thank you. All in a week's work and then he's back recording the next one. So That's if right. you... If you've missed out, we do record maybe one or two episodes every now and then, put it up there, which is amazing. And um, we've had incredible previous episodes. I think we were in episode 20 with this one. So welcome. You can always go back and watch some of the other ones. And um, today, I've got a personal question, something that I've read in the Bible, conversations, stuff that just pops up every now and then. I actually have no idea what it means or or if anybody else knows what it means or where, what's the context in the Bible. So today I want to ask the question about, um, did you know about the, <laughs> did you know about the, the Gog and Magog? Mm -hmm. What is it? Why do we read about it? What does it mean? Um, so I'm like, I'm blindly going into this question because I just know I've seen it somewhere, yes. but I actually have never really someone speak about it or what it is or, okay, or why it's really important. Should mm. we know about it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned just before the program started, I'm going to ask you a question on Gok and Magok. So I quickly put in a, um, a pin here to make sure I can go directly yeah, to the yeah, point. Yeah. So a few minutes ago, I just identified it so I can talk to you. So, Vessel, you read about Gog and Magog twice in your Bible. Once in the Old Testament and once in the New Testament. Okay. Once in Ezekiel and once in the book of Revelation. And the two has got nothing to do with each other. There's a thousand years between the Gog and Magog of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39, 38 and 39. And the Gog and Magog of Revelation chapter 20, there's a thousand years time divide between okay. the two. What is, is there something specific, Gog and Magog? Yes. What, like, is it a name for something? Yes. Is it a place? Is it yes. a person? Is right. it a... It's, a, it's, actually, it's actually both. It, uh, in, 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 like, for instance, in the book of Ezekiel, it will speak of nations and the one leader of all the um, ungodly Gentile um, heathen nations with a head leading them, the Antichrist. Yes. So if I read, if you would allow me, and I read a few verses, suddenly you, the picture will unfold. Okay, well, I'm okay. here for it. So it says, Gog and allies attack Israel. God and allies. Gog. Okay, Gog. Gog. Don't read it wrong. Okay. Gog and allies attack Israel. All right. Thank God it's not God. <laughs> so it says. So Ezekiel. Yes. Okay. Ezekiel. So, so let's talk about the Gog and Magog first of, of the book of Ezekiel. Yeah, because you okay. said there's two different ones. Right. A thousand year uh, apart. time difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this one, son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. The prince of Rosh, you can hear it immediately, the country's name Rosh, which we know is speaking of Russia. Mesech and Tubal, so even Turkey, and prophesied against him, thus saith the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O Gog, prince of Rosh, Mesech and Tubal. So this one person represents these nations, these ungodly nations that is going to attack Israel. So you can clearly see what's going to happen now. What is the context of this going to? Has this happened? Because it's Old Testament Ezekiel or is this a prophecy? Or? So this, Ezekiel 30, you're quite right. Ezekiel 38 and 39 is a prophecy of the war that will take place in the last days of the seven year tribulation under the Antichrist leading up to the battle of Armageddon. Alrighty. So these nations, we even have the names of the nations that will lead the charge yeah. against Israel. Gog and his allies. Right. And that's so it's called Gog and Magog. Okay. And the prince, the head of these nations, even called Gog, which is a, a other name for the Antichrist, actually. Okay. So here it goes. The Lord says, and you will bring a company with you of Persia. 
Dat is Iran. Iranians. Ethiopia. Libya. Now we know these nations. Iran, Ethiopia, Libya. We know them all. I mean, Ethiopia and Libya is North African nations. Yeah. Persia is, uh, I mean, just only like 60 years ago, something like that, um, uh, um, Persia changed its name to the People's Republic of Iran. All right. So that's Iran. Current Iran is it's Persia. Persia in right. And so, and Goma, which speaks of uh, Germany, and the House of Tukharma from the far north and all your troops, many people with you, prepare and be ready. Come with your companies, company, gather them. For in the latter days, you will come to the land, into the land, the land of Israel. Yes. So you can see, in the latter years, at yeah. the end of time. And you shall gather with the sword many people on the mountains of Israel. Okay, you see what's happening? So these nations of Gog and Magog assemble together yeah. to come and fight against Israel in the latter years in the days of the end time. And this is the setup for Armageddon. Yes, you got it. So it says, so you brought them um, uh, out of the nations and now on that day it shall come to pass that the thoughts in your mind that will arise and you will make an evil plan. Who's he speaking? What is he saying you will make? Because these nations under the leadership of the Antichrist. Okay. So Gog and Magog nations will be led by the Antichrist. Okay. And he personifies Gog himself. Okay. And so now you will say, I will go against the land of unwalled villages, which is Israel, and peaceful people and dwell safely. And I will plunder and take booty and stretch my hand out to a wasteland. Um, Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarish. This is Saudi Arabia. And now you suddenly have um, Arab nations like Saudi Arabia, Sheba, coming from Saudi Arabia, and Dedan. So we speak of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and all those places. Yeah. You and all the, long, the young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army? So it's the armies yeah. coming. So Gok and Magok is the armies of these nations. And uh, therefore the Son of Man, the Lord says, uh, on that day when my people Israel dwell safely, then they will come into the land. So the Lord says, I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O God, before their eyes. That was now, and the Lord says, I'm still in Ezekiel 38. It, in the same time, when God comes against the land of Israel, the Lord says that my fury will show in my face. I will call a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains. Every man's sword will be against his brother. So it talks about an army of, of soldiers battling the land of Israel when they think they have peace. Because he says, Israel will live in peace. Okay, well, it makes sense because the Antichrist make a seven-year peace treaty. Okay. And so Israel's God is I was just down. wondering, you're in a seven-year tribulation. When is there a peace treaty in a seven-year tribulation? Because uh, the tribulation after the rapture, the Antichrist will make peace with Israel and the 22 surrounding Arab nations and other nations of the world to have peace with Israel and they will sign a seven-year peace treaty. Okay. Now Israel let the God go down. Yes. There's peace. And in the middle of the seven-year tribulation, when we go into the last, the latter part, then suddenly these nations turn against Israel. Okay. So now, so now it changed into where Israel let the guard down, not expecting this. Suddenly, all these nations turn against that. Yeah. So and he says, "I will bring judgment and pestilence and bloodshed, hailstone and fire and brimstone." So Gog's army destroyed. Now chapter thirty-nine says, "Prophesy." I have it against you, Prince of Rosh, Meshach, Tibal, and those who are with you. I will send fire on Magog, and those who live in security in the coastland, they shall know that I am God, and I will be holy. And so the Lord says, I will come and help my people when this battle is going. In actual fact, um, to make it very simplistic now, when after the rapture, the seven-year tribulation plays out, and there's a peace treaty, Israel's God is down, but halfway down that, 
the Antichrist turn against them. And when the Antichrist turn against them, all the nations that's under the power of the Antichrist, which is the Babylonian Empire, Medo-Persian Empire, Greek Empire, and also you have the empire of um, the revived Roman Empire now. All these nations actually called here Gog and Magog, we actually know in the New Testament, you also have another name for them in the book of Matthew, and that is the goat nations. All righty. That is the goat nations. So Gog and Magog, actually in the Old Testament, they have the name of Gog and Magog, but they have a, a New Testament name too. It's the goat nations under the power of the Antichrist, and they will come against Israel in the latter days. And so there will be a big battle. Let me tell you about that battle. The battle will be so huge that Jesus Christ will come from heaven to fight against Gog and Magog to save Israel. If Jesus don't come down himself and his armies, nothing will be left over of Israel. Yeah. They will all be killed in the land of Israel. There will be nothing left. So this is saying all those armies gathers on the mountaintops or the hills of Israel. Yes. And what we would call, or the Bible calls, Armageddon plays off right there at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Yes. So those armies actually, um, it plays out on three places. Because it plays out in uh, Armageddon, that you're saying, which is North Galilee. I mm -hmm. told you one day I'll take you there. Let's go. go. show you. But, so uh, where, where the valley of Josephat is. Yes. Then we have the Kidron Valley, which is in Jerusalem between Mount of Olives and the city of Jerusalem, Mount Zion. There's a valley called the Kidron Valley. Many of the armies will be there. Then in the south, in Petra, in south of Jordan, which is Edom, there's millions of people going to battle the Jews there. So this battle of Gog and Magog actually takes place on three fronts. All right. And so Jesus has to come and save the day. Yeah. If Jesus don't come, there will be nothing left over of Israel. Mm. They will be done. What's the story with the Air Force where one of the things will play off? Yes. So that will be... It was an interesting thing you once said. Yes. Because, I mean, if I ask you a question, where is Israel's... Israel's strongest point to fight and to battle. And uh, people that know will tell you immediately. It is in Galilee, to the north of the country, mm -hmm. which is where the old traditional place was, where all the wars in the Old Testament, when all the other nations came against Israel, they, they battled in Armageddon, the valley of, of Jezreel. So that valley of Jezreel is a flat land, huge place kilometers far when you stand on Mount Carmel and you look towards that to the north yeah. from Mount Carmel you see that great stretch of land far as the eye can see underground is the Air Force Base of Israel. Let's go. That's the Iron Fist. Yeah. So what is interesting is that the nations Gok and Magok they will get there or try to get there as quick as they can. Okay. Yes. Like you think what's happening currently now with the Israelis bombing Palestine, yeah. uh, north in Gaza. I mean, imagine Israel had no airplanes to protect themselves. Mm. So they'll try and take out the Air Force, which is in that valley. They're going to get there. And I mean, it's underground. The basis is underground. Yeah. They're going to take out Israel's Air Force. Actual fact, Daniel chapter 7 says, Daniel 7, that they will win the battle, um, the goat nations against Israel. They will by way of speaking, break their back. Okay. So their air force will be broken. Yeah. It's terrible to think about it. But I mean... And that's where will, Jesus needs to come in, uh, step in. I'm telling you. So this Gok and Magok that we were talking about, there's two very interesting things about it. Okay. That I don't know if you know about it. but We're still very, in a Gog and Magog of Ezekiel. Yes, yes. Okay. And I'm getting to the end now <laughs> before you shop over to the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But the Bible says... When this battle is done, this is the day which I've spoken, the Lord said, surely it's coming, it shall be done. The Lord says, I will come, I will deliver my people. Mm -hmm. But hear, hear this, they will take wood from the field, nor cut it from the forest, because they will make fire of all the weapons, and they will make fire of them for seven years. What does that mean? All the equipment of the war, yeah. that will be gathered in the land of Israel. Everything that Israel will take into possession after this battle mm -hmm. of Gog and Magog, it will take them seven years to burn everything up. 
Okay, so that's not really happening. They're just saying that's it is, go- of- it is going to happen. Okay. It's future. So after Armageddon. Yes. For seven years. For seven years to clean. It says, and they will make fires with them for seven years. But that's after the seven year tribulation. Yes. That's after the second coming of yes. Jesus. Sure. That's during the thousand year reign. In the start of the, se- of the thousand okay, year. Okay, so Jesus and everybody reigns with him is going to be cleaning up for seven <laughs> years. Or... <laughs> well, there's something else about it. Okay. Listen to this. And it came to pass in that day, I will give Gok a, bu- a burial place. Okay. He's going to be buried in that land. Yeah. He came to war, but he's going to be buried. There in Israel, in the valley of those who pass by east of the sea, and I will obstruct travelers, because they will bury Gog and all his multitudes. They will be buried. Therefore, they will call it the valley of Hamon Gog. Now, for seven months, the house of Israel will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. Wow. To bury all the dead will take seven months. Cleanse the land. To cleanse the land. And, and you know, but of course, we know uh, Revelation 19, I think Minyu mentioned it once before, when all the wild birds of the earth, the birds of prey come and they eat the flesh of all the people, what happens to all the bones of all the hundreds of millions of people? Millions and millions of people. So it says here, they will set men apart regularly employed. They will get paid with the help of a search party to pass through the land and bury those bodies remaining on the ground in order to clean it. And at the end of seven months, they will make a search. Now they start looking. The search party will pass through the land. And when anyone sees a man's bone, he will set up a marker by it till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamon Gog. The name of the city will also be Hamona. Thus, they shall cleanse the land. That's so crazy. This is crazy. The war is that is... in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. I mean, it's in the Bible. It's all here. Yeah. Never heard this. It's so interesting. <laughs> yes. It's so... Once you understand... I the mean, if you read it just for reading it, you would be like, oh, stories... Yeah. But contextually now understanding how it it's plays like, off. Wow. Yeah. So these armies that are coming in the last seven years, they battle against Israel. There's going to be a great fight. Jesus come to help them. It's going to take seven years to clean the land of all the equipment. Yeah. And it will take seven months to clean the land of all the dead bodies. Sure. Once again, that is then during the thousand year reign of At the Jesus. beginning. Yeah, at the at beginning. At the end of the seven year tribulation, in the beginning of, this, of the thousand year. So I said to you when you asked me the question um, about where do we read in the Bible about God? And I said, oh, there's one more place. And that was uh, or is in the book of Revelation. Okay. But this one is a short one. Okay. Okay, let's go. So it says here in the Revelation chapter 20, verse 7, when the thousand years have expired. So at the end of the thousand years. Satan will be released from prison. Okay. He will go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. Wait, read that again. (laughs) After the thousand years, he'll be released (laughs) to go do what? (coughs) Okay, to do what? Okay, Revelation 20 verse 3 says, but after this, the thousand year, Satan being a bottomless pit, he will be released for a little while. Question is, why yeah. will Satan be released for a little while? Well, here it says, now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. That is the little while. And he will go out to deceive the nations. This is the sheep nations now. Yeah. Yeah. The goat nations is gone which are the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and gather them together to battle, whose number is at the sand of the sea. In the millions. Sure. We have another Gog and Magog coming up. So you, during the thousand year reign of Jesus, there's going to be, he's going to establish governments, people are going to be led, exactly. the sheep nations. Yes, people born. You still have, have sin then? Or? Because you have the sinful nature of human beings. Okay. Sinful nature is always there. Yeah. Satan is not there. But the sinful nature of humankind, I mean, it's still there. Of the sheep nations, of not the sheep of people nations. who has gone to be with Jesus. Not because, with... I mean, they are born again. Yeah. So 
actually what is shocking here, Vessel, and I mean, I know you said to me you want to talk to me about I want to know more about the sheep and the goat. Right. Like but now what is interesting here is we actually discover now something. A thousand years with Satan out of the equation, being in a bottomless pit, in the abyss. The moment he's released, the nations follow him again. Yeah, they, he deceives them again. How come? So, and it says, when they come over the breadth of the earth, surrounds the beautiful city, beloved city, Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil is cast in the lake of fire. It's Jeez. his last move. <laughs> yeah. It was his last move. So he comes again. So he came with Gog and Magog at the end of the seven year tribulation yeah. to destroy Israel. He did not succeed because Christ comes from heaven to save Israel. Yeah. A thousand years he is now in the bottomless pit. When he's released, again, he brought them, but this Gok and Magok means from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, from all corners of the earth. Suddenly, he gathered them, he gathered them again to fight again in, in the land of Israel, again against the city of Jerusalem. But this time Jesus is in there. Yeah. You sure? Well, the sheep nations, because they will see Jesus reigning and, sure. they will, and they'll still be deceived by... But, okay, but it shows that many people around the globe in maybe uh, Latin America, North America, Australia, India, China, yeah, yeah. Russia, far, that maybe many of them in the thousand years, I mean, it's a lovely place, the earth, there's no devil, but they're not interested to love and serve Jesus Christ. Okay, because of course, there's new kids born and exactly. new generation millions of people. And millions because I would go, oh, but they all saw the second coming of Christ. No, no, no. Because so now millions is born in the thousand years. Okay, and so it's, I get it now. Yeah. And, and they will be deceived by the devil yeah. to come and kill those that are in Jerusalem. I wonder what he will be promising then in a short while, rallying that amount of people to Jerusalem. Uh, to me, it is always, I'm perplexed by the words, but after these things, he must be released for a little while. Yeah. So, uh, you know, are we talking about a few months? I'm sure the I promise is pretty good that he's giving them for them to all rally that quickly. And So it also shows you that a thousand years with Christ on earth, in this dispensation of the thousand years, doesn't guarantee that everybody will love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Well, that's that, what you see. And, and yeah. they are called the Gog and the Magog. Yeah. Meaning, all the nations. Like what happened previously yeah. in the book of Ezekiel. So you think we have got political problems now, and then you're like, <laughs> and then Jesus is the political leader, and yes, you still have right. political problems. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, and then after the thousand years, the devil is thrown in the pit of hell. and then, oh, well. well, the fact is our time is up. That is true. We've done and dusted. That, that is really interesting. I've never, I've never seen that part of the, the second Gog and Magog. That's why I probably I'm so confused. Yeah. Now understanding the two different ones. And there are a thousand years between them. Yeah. So the one is the goat nations. That's the first time the Gog and Magog. And the second one represents those at the end of the thousand years that would never turn to Christ. Yeah. But they will turn to the devil. Yeah. In a little while. Short while. Sure. Amazing. That's amazing. Well, I hope you've learned something new. I've learned something new today. Thank so you. that was super helpful. I hope that helped you. That's a really interesting Ezekiel. Where do we read that in Ezekiel? That's chapter 38, 39. 38, 39, and then Revelation 21. 20. Uh, 20. 20. Chapter 20. Okay, yes. chapter 20. Well, go read that. It's not just a Bible story. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's crazy. It's going to happen. It's, it's prophecy. Yeah. Prophecy means it will be fulfilled. Yeah. The, I, I just read the other day, Jesus said, not one word will be unfulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one word that I've spoken shall pass away. It wow. will go to, come to pass. Well, now that you know these prophecies and what is to come, that's it's I, I, what, like I said at the beginning, I'm asking this purely out of ignorance because I don't know. I've heard these things, but now that you've put that into context, super helpful. So I hope that helped you. If you think this is an interesting conversation, that's going to help someone else. Share. Share, like, subscribe, send it out to your friends. Um, we hope it, yeah, it enlightens, it brings 
context to the Bible for me, that's super helpful. That if I'm going to go read Ezekiel now, I'm like, okay, I think I know a little bit more of what's really happening here versus just going through all this stuff. Especially when you get to chapter 38 and 39. Yeah, precisely. I'll understand that part. So, sure. Well, thanks for tuning in today. We Thank hope you. you see you at the next episode coming out next Thursday. And of course, remember, you can go back and watch some of the previous episodes. And yeah, we see you next week. Amen. Amen.